I realized that I, I was very happy I had my Christmas shopping done before before uh, things are coming on. We're two weeks away from Christmas. I realize I missed some people. Oh no. This is this is this is intense panic scenario. But oh well, what am I gonna do? That's right. The same thing I always do. Three, two, one. Wow, that was a good one. Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. It is the BNR stream today on this fine 11th of December 2023. I hope you're having a wonderful week. We'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. My week has been fairly alright. Um, a little bit of like, really want to get to the end of the year. You know, it's like, oh, you know, like, I gotta do things. I gotta do them before the end of the year. Um, so I really hope it's the new year when I've got things, or well, new things that I can do. Just things that don't take tons of time. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I've had a pretty jam-packed week. How about, you've you've been so kind, you've visited the stream, or VOD if you're on YouTube. Uh, you probably deserve looking at the VOD, or looking at the game that I'm playing. Oh, did I have the, I had the audio doubled up. Whoops. I would have... <laughs> You're not gonna hear that in the, in the VOD, but, uh, people on stream, whoops, sorry, I was, I was duping the audio for a moment. Um, so, this is, uh, well, you might be thinking, didn't we just do Tomb Raider 3? We're done, right? We're done. Uh, but, one, you know the trend. Every single Tomb Raider game so far, and actually this is the last one, unfortunately, has an expansion associated with it. Uh, this is the very, 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 very last expansion uh, for Tomb Raider. This is the last one. Uh, I am dropping a ton of network frames, apparently. <laughs> there goes the network frames. Reconnecting. Oh boy. I'm so glad this happened. Hold on. <laughs> uh, just before, just before I jump in, I know there's one thing I can do to help out. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. This is the greatest stream ever. I'm getting like hammered by like some random clients here and there. And so I'm just like, I'm just gonna like turn it off right now. And it'll probably speed up everything. And if not, whoops. Okay. Alright. We'll just dive into it. This is Tomb Raider, the last art the lost artifact. Not the last artifact, the lost artifact. There's a trademark in there, just briefly in there. Um Tomb Raider The Lost Artifact is uh, yet another expansion pack for Tomb Raider, but interestingly, unlike the previous two that were released as parts of rebundles, and uh, they were free downloads if you already owned the game, but if you bought the game new, you'd get these extra levels, Tomb Raider The Lost Artifact was sold as an official expansion pack, and in doing so, there's technically no current legal way to own this game until, uh, unless you buy a physical version of this from somewhere, or... Uh, you, uh, wait another two months for that Tomb Raider 1, 2, 3 remaster to come out because it will contain these levels. So, that's pretty cool. Uh, other than that, it is an expansion for Tomb Raider 3, so there's not a lot to particularly say. Uh, but there is one thing, and that is... They have a custom loading screen for every single level. Okay, stream is back, stream is back. Hello everyone who tried to chime into the stream just a moment ago. We got this helicopter that comes in, and I would like to read out... The plot summary. There exists a small plot summary, or rather a, a, a little prologue summary, on the uh, on the website. It's been redocumented as part of uh, in the Stellar's Guide as well as also on the the fandom page. Um, but I think, given that if you da if you just got this game from somewhere and then you you started playing it, you're going to miss this plot. So I'm going to read this out to you. Only minutes have passed since the hideous creature that Dr. Willard had became gasped the last breath of its violently short life cycle. The experiment had failed. The gleam of immortality returned to the stars from which it came. Lara looks on silently, oblivious to the press of the bitter Antarctic wind. Suddenly, a ragged figure emerges from the dark, gaping hole of the media cavern. It is Willard, a human reborn, but in the throes of death. A hand gestures wildly, a final guttural laugh tears through the silence, the figure slumps forward and is still. With snow already forming a ghastly shroud over the body, Lara quickly tears an object from the dead man's grasp, a wallet, its monogram W, now standing sadly against Willard's last earthly remains. Inside, the usual collection of tattered mementos, a hodgepodge of foreign currency and... 
but this cannot be. A familiar expression glides across Lara's face, an eyebrow raised by a wry and knowing smile, before her a telegram urging an immediate return to take possession of another artifact, now secure beneath the Scottish mists at Willard's Loch Ness estate. The adventure continues, says Lara, to nothing but Willard's dark laughter still ringing in her ears. So there is a fifth. Uh, so pretty much, yeah, right after the uh, end boss of the last game, here's a little blurb saying, oh, there's a fifth one, there's a fifth element, which gives us a little excuse to go on somewhere. Um, now, there also exists in the manual an actual description of each level as you go into it. So I'm going to read this out as well, and I'll read one out for every single level. It has been said, dead men tell no tales. Fortunately for Lara, Willard's wallet was screaming at her. Why would a dying man hold out his wallet to someone who just put an end to his life? Was Willard trying to tell Lara something? A warning, perhaps? Hmm, what have we here? Lara wondered, picking up a monogrammed leather wallet no doubt made from the hide of some poor endangered species. Some foreign currency, a few English pounds, Dutch gliders, even Japanese yen, a map of England, and what seems like a photo of Willard's estate. Well, well, mused Lara. It looks like I have a fan. He has a newspaper clipping of me. I didn't... I, I didn't low... The, the typo, nice. I didn't know he was so attached. A yellow piece of paper catches her eye. It's a telegram to Willard from one of his henchmen. Fifth artifact found stop. Delivery confirmed to your Loch Ness estate stop. There's more in the message, but the rest is unreadable, except to mention that someone else knows about the fifth artifact. So it's back to the UK for me. Where's that helicopter of mine? So, yeah, I know, I know, it's sort of the same, the same plot again. Uh, but yeah, we have this helicopter drop us off. And we're in Scotland area, where we shall continue on and, uh, or rather start, a brand new final adventure uh, to reclaim the fifth artifact. Uh, I like this little plot, and I actually feel like maybe I should have been, if this, uh, if there were these summaries or short little blurbs at the beginning of, or in the actual game itself, I would have loved to read these. Um, one thing I like about this expansion is it's got a really nice atmosphere, and it's actually got some real nifty secrets, albeit a lot of them sort of hinge on backtracking in the sense of they're not just like something crafty that you do in order to, um, well, they are still something crafty you do, but, uh, you'll notice that I, I don't know all the secrets, and you're gonna notice I sort of breeze through these levels. They're a bit shorter than you'd expect. Um, but there's a lot of care and a lot of love put into a lot of these textures and environments. And I feel like out of all the expansions, this is certainly the one that feels the most like something you should actually be paying for. And not just downloading for free as part of your experience. It's very neat. We start off in this beginning area and we'll swim down this river um, where we've got this bridge ahead of us. And I love the, the environment we've got going on here. Even if it still sort of looks like uh, some other areas from Tomb Raider 3. Um, you're gonna find all these, like, uh, well, uh, yeah, for reference as well, we've got six levels, uh, two pairs of level, sorry, pa three pairs of levels, sets of two, uh, two levels per environment. Um, my goal for, uh, this stream is we're only gonna do three, we're only gonna do three levels, and, uh, I will go back, well, we'll go back next week, and we'll finish it up. Um, just because, uh, if anyone remembers way back, uh, about this time last year, maybe a little, little earlier last year, uh, I did the Tomb Raider 2, um, uh, the gold, uh, levels, the five levels, and, um, yeah, that took me over three and a half hours, that was one of two streams I've done that have gone over the three and a half hour mark, which is, by far, things are taking too long, because <laughs> I start these streams at 8.30pm, um, local time so once i've done a three and a half hour stream it's you know it's been longer than i really uh actually i think i remember exactly how to get up there yeah yeah i was thinking like oh can i do a running jump but i don't think so um i'm running this game in the same way i did uh the well the regular game uh for reference as well i know some people have uh you know some wonderings about how to how to play Ooh, yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, sorry to interrupt myself, but uh, um, I noticed I just started running forward. I had let go of the controller, and I just kept running forward, and that's a bit curious. This guy's gonna make a runner for the uh, for the door just to open it up for some reason. There are a lot of demon dogs in this uh, level. Um, 
Well, I got me a new Xbox controller. And, uh... Oh, come on, come on. There you go. I got these real, little red glowing eyes. I got me a new Xbox controller. Um, I think I had ordered it in, but it hadn't arrived yet for the last stream. Uh, but now it's arrived. And, uh... The controller, it's a newer, it's like a series-style Xbox controller. So the only real differences between this and the Xbox One controller is that the D-pad is a, um... It's kind of like a... I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's got the... It's more like a rocker than a proper D-pad. So you've sort of got like this plastic part that's chilling in the diagonals. Um, and it also is a bit more... Um, like there's a stronger concavity to it. The center of it is a lot more innered than the, um, than the directions. And you'll definitely feel that you're pressing the directions a fair bit more. Uh, I'm not 100% used to D-pads that are like this. I usually um, prefer just like, hey, have an actual D that I'm touching. Um, but I will say the feedback on the button, on the actual, like, buttons underneath, is rather strong, rather, like, intense. You're probably hearing some of that sometimes. Um, it's a real strong feedback on this. Um, and that feels alright. I actually am getting a bit of a gist of the, the directions fairly decently because of that. Um, but if there's one thing I'm going to rip into, it's that, yeah, I, I was commenting on, I ran, I kept running forward for a hot second after I had let go of the controller. And I don't, like, that is another example. That's going to, that's going to catch me out all stream, I'll tell you that. Um, and I don't know if that's, uh, either the controller, um, the, ah, yeah, here we need to go. Uh, I don't know if that's the controller, the, uh, the cable I've got, or... My USB controller on my, uh, on my PC. Probably not the latter. Potentially the USB cable. Because I got myself just kind of some cheap USB-C cables. Because I don't have USB-C to A cables really lying around. And uh, so I'm like, okay, sure, I gotta get some. I The only USB-C device I actually use. Or I've got two. I use my controller. Sorry, I use my, um, my keyboard. It has a USB-C plug. And uh, my phone does. But... Both are USB 2, so... And I, I'd imagine this controller... It's, it's not relying on any USB 3 features. Uh, but that being said, yeah... It, um... It cut out on me just... Twice now. Uh, there's a little lever here. How oh, very neat. And now it's absolutely pitch black. There we go. <laughs> Who turned off the lights? This is a weird little cave, but, uh... It just opens up this little hole, we climb up, and we're literally just back here. I don't actually know if you needed to even be up here. I think maybe you did. Um, I think this opens up the door on the other side. We should probably save as well. There's not as many mean- well, maybe there are later. There's not as many mean jumps that, are, uh, that I can recall compared to Tomb Raider 3. But, you know, when it gets going, it gets going. It's Tomb Raider. They can't, they can't hide anything too much from you, so... Um, so yeah, so I got these cheapo, um... Uh, USB-C to A cables. It came in a two-pack, and it was fairly cheap. Uh, I am not expecting anything fancy out of these cables, but I was expecting a basic USB 2... Not really much power connectivity to be the gist. Mm, doesn't seem to be doing what I wanted to do. Uh, unfortunately, compared to the previous... Um, controller. I don't know what the camera's doing when you pick up that. It's sort of... There's a mild hint at a secret down there. Maybe I could have a crack at it. But it's like, it's one of those gutsy secrets. You're gonna see, like, what, what I mean when I try and do this jump. But it's like, the water is gonna try and, you know, drag me back into the level. You can't actually swim out here. But you could definitely do... It's a bit of a drop, ain't it? Um, a swan dive isn't going to give me the distance, nah. Because, yeah, yeah, if you try to do this, oh, you're caught out, so. Oh, well. Um, but, yeah, yeah. So, if it is the cable, well, I'll just get a new cable. But, the original Xbox uh, One controller did come with a micro USB cable that you could plug into. Um... I didn't really like the cable, but it's more because it's a micro USB cable and not because it's, uh, you know, the Xbox branded one. But at the very least, I've not had an issue with the cable itself. Uh, 
a lack of cable, you know, invites problem. Invites like, well, what's what's the cable I get? Because I don't know my USB-C cables, but man, you know, if I had to buy a controller and then I'm just gonna also buy some... Why am I... You're seeing it as well, it's just flickering black for a hot second. I don't know what's going on there. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, these guys are sort of just like the the station guards. Now this lever is timed. That door uh, a fair bit over to my left, or now my right, uh, just open up. I'm gonna probably miss it for a hot second, but we'll take another crack to get it uh, because this is uh, this is not actually the the river. This is just a lake here. In this lake is a crowbar. It's mildly decent. You pick up that crowbar. It even hints at where you're gonna need to use it upcoming. There's a yeah, there's a lot of telegraph stuff in this, so I don't actually feel that bad about. Um, there's nothing really cryptic going on in uh, this uh, game so far. Maybe we'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. The other difference, well, the only other differences with this Xbox Series controller is it's got a um, a share button in the middle. Uh, this is rebindable on PC, so it just detects as another button, uh, which is neat that you can do that. Um, on uh, you also have some kind of. They got the grippier texture on the triggers and the wings a fair bit more. So here's the door. This guy's just chilling here. I don't know where, what are you hiding from. Um, yeah, I don't really mind the grippier texture, but I don't like really grip the the triggers. And the wings a little bit, but pretty indifferent. But other than that, the face buttons all feel the same. The sticks feel mostly the same. Uh, and that's not really a bad thing, because I did like the Xbox One controller, I just wish that the micro USB port was a lot, uh, stronger, because you get that cable, and then it just breaks, so. This guy, uh, does a bit of a run out, and it will open this gate, which is only open for, like, a handful of seconds. So you want to take out that guy, and inside, uh, playing the main game, you sort of get the idea that, yeah, crowbar is used for doors like this. Open this up. The crowbar does not drop behind us. And uh, this is a secret. There are 15 secrets in the whole game. There's three now. Uh, but this will get you the MP5. Will it be useful? Will I ever use it? Uh, we'll see. Is there stuff on the ground? It is. Ooh. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, as well. Since we're starting from scratch, because, you know, New Adventure, even though it came out directly. Oh, sorry. Well, it didn't come out directly after Tomb Raider 3, but it takes place immediately after Tomb Raider 3 finishes, so... Uh, now the gate behind us closed, but don't worry, there is a little hideaway flume that we can escape out of. Um, yeah, I, I don't know the full my full feelings about this controller, I'd like to play it a bit more. Um, but there was one game that I was testing a bit, this is a wonderful segue, uh, with the controller, and that is... Fortnite? I know, right? I don't particularly play free-to-play games or multiplayer games. Um, and interestingly... Uh, oh, uh, interestingly, Fortnite is... Uh, it's a game that I've got like some mates who play. Um, and definitely, if there's one thing that I get out of Fortnite as like an observer, as someone from the outside just looking in, Fortnite is an really, really, really... Aggressive game at, uh, convincing people at, uh, you know, purchasing stuff. They basically try to encapsulate you by having, uh, this model where if you play for a fair bit, you'll get enough V-Bucks. There's a couple of free V-Bucks that you can get. Uh, then you get the Battle Pass, a classic, you know, this is like a staple now, but just remember, Fortnite was probably one of the earlier games that did that. By the way, this is like a poison, no, it's, it's just a swamp under this fog. But, uh, unfortunately, you can't climb up. So, uh, you're gonna be stuff if you try to do that. Oh, there you go. Hi there, crow. How you doing? Hope you don't mind that. Um... So you don't want to touch the... Touch the ground. Um... But, what's interesting about Fortnite, especially in the past... Few days, it's really only a couple of days old... As the time I've, I'm recording this... They've just casually added in a handful of other modes. Now, I dropped there, which looks like, oh, you dropped into the, the swamp. But if you stand here, you'll notice that under this crest, there's a hole here, by the way. This is uh, where you need to enter, and Lara's okay holding her breath for a little bit. There we 
we go. Almost out. Um, yeah, Fortnite has uh, more modes. I didn't even realize they hired Harmonix. Sorry, as in they bought Harmonix. As in the guys who made Rock Band and originally made Guitar Hero. And Amplitude? Let's just mention Amplitude. Someone would love an Amplitude reference. That just looks like it will slide out. So we'll just go straight forward. Um, and uh, I was wondering, where on earth were they going to get used? And uh, it came up in a um, kind of like intro playable, you know, demo that... Uh, I don't know, just kind of showed up in Fortnite. I don't know, they do this. It's like, oh, new chapter, new, new, you know, thing you can demo. Um, or a trailer or something. Uh, but in this demo near the end, it just casually came up with a, with a, uh, what is referred to as the highway in, uh, various of these rhythm games where the notes come at you. It's a rhythm game all of a sudden. And then you're playing along to lose yourself, so. Uh, this, by the way, is, uh, one of the two keys that we'll need in this level. This is a, referred to as a thistle zone. Never deny the game's ability to force you to climb. Um, this is technically uh, right next to where we were maybe like three minutes ago. But uh, again, swampy ground underneath. So you don't get a free reign to just go over here just yet. Um, until now, that is. Uh, they also showed off a racing mode. The racing mode is done by Psionics, the same guys who did Rocket League, who... We know Epic had bought, and that one felt like a bit of a more natural pick, just because, hey, they have a, a game that's fairly popular, made on the Unreal Engine. Um, this, by the way, puts you here. And then the, <laughs> and then the controller died for a hot second. If you ever see me, like, overturn, like, I just keep doing the same action for a long amount of time, I'm going to blame the controller every single time. Uh, I was blaming the controller because I decided to give Fortnite a go. And in particular, just those two modes. They've also got a mode called Lego Fortnite, which is uh, strangely um, more akin to the survival mode that Fortnite was maybe going to be before it became Battle Royale or... Well, not or nothing, because I'm pretty sure they've got like some implementation of that Save the World mode that they, you know, originally pitched Fortnite as. Um... But, uh, but yeah, they've got a rhythm mode that, for all intents and purposes, is close to Rock Band. It's not, it's, it's not like exactly Rock Band, and especially not in terms of the controller. And that's something that most rhythm games will always live and die by. It's like, you're going to be playing the same songs as other games. Oh, hi there, bats. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, you're going to be playing the same, you know, songs that a lot of other rhythm games have to some degree. Uh, this one's got Seven Nation Army. So, there you go, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, you pick an instrument, there you go, this guy runs out. This is the same thing, but, uh, it goes the other way. So, you'll sand here, do a bit of a slight, and I goofed, and I goofed, done. Um, you'll pick an instrument, you know, guitar, bass, uh, drums or vocals, uh, and then, uh, you basically play a chart. The chart is a four note chart if you're on easy or medium or five is it five on hard i think it might be five on hard there you go Hello. um and and uh an expert uh get enough notes well you know you build up a, a combo of uh four times or six times if you're on base um hit notes for star power or overdrive as they call it which is exactly i think what it's called in rock band so that you can double your score for a bit uh, keep your streak up and earn enough points and you'll get stars for the song. Do well enough, you get five stars. Or even well enough, you'll get gold stars. And, uh, build up enough of a multiplier with your band to get a band score. There is a individual score and a band score just to let you know that, yes, you can personally still achieve things even if your team is sucking. Which, from experience, everyone who plays Fortnite, you know, Fortnite Festival is the official name of the mode. It's got its own age rating like they're really treating it like it's its own game but you do still have to launch fortnite and it still tells people you're part of a squad which is kind of curious um they got a couple of things they need to change here and there but uh but yeah um a very curious release because uh was anyone expecting fortnite to be a rhythm mode um or to have a rhythm mode 
Um, I was expecting it to be a little, you know, half-baked, but from playing it, it's like, nah, they, they've thought of this. They've given it enough time. It's certainly very much like, oh my gosh, I'm blind. I'm just wandering around going, oh, how do I get out of here? <laughs> Only thing is this, uh, clearly isn't, like, going, oh, also, duh, I'm, I'm dumby. I was like, hmm, this is the room I was just in, but... Not up here? Oh. Right? I'll drop down from up here. That's a very steamy pathway. I don't think I'm quite ready yet, especially because we'll see the, the door I go down, so... Yeah, I don't think I'm quite ready yet. We'll do the jump again, we'll, we'll make our way around again. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit curious. Um, I guess one thing is that since it is a free-to-play game and making charts for real songs is rather expensive, uh, they've only got a handful of charts really available at a time. It looks like there's only going to be like eight or nine songs. But uh, as I tuned in today, they have rotated the songs a little bit. Uh, a couple of songs are not there. A couple of songs are there. Um, or like have been there for a couple of days. So uh, the battle pass reward. Or rather, sorry, the, um, was it the, the music pass? Oh my gosh, again, I'm blind. Um, here's your door, by the way, where your two keys go in. Legit, I am crazy blind. <laughs> um, but, uh... Yeah. Oh, I love the staircase, by the way. It's like it barely goes up for a bit. And then you're climbing up here. We've got this statue. And then suddenly... Whoosh! <laughs> that, on my first playthrough, that was a proper jump scare. That was a proper like, oh my gosh, jeez. Um, I think there's still plenty of health kits. It's not too bad, uh, mostly because you don't have a lot of enemies that shoot you. Um, really, at all, after, I, I, like, I'm going to do three levels. I've practiced those three levels. It's not that many enemies that shoot you. Not yet, at least. Um, but yeah, yeah, the the weekend is on the, the battle pass, uh, or rather a seasonal battle pass, which is worth twice as many V-Bucks, almost. It's 1,800 V-Bucks, which is a lot of dollar. Um, and it's separate to the regular Battle Pass, which is strange because the regular Battle Pass contains rewards for the racing mode. And I think a lot of the LEGO skins carry over. So real character skins and emotes, a lot of them have LEGO equivalents, and they've definitely put in the effort to make sure that everything that you've done still, you know, can be used in those other modes. So... Uh, while you do have to get instruments that probably won't be, you know, usable in the other modes, uh, you know, your player skins are usable in all, all these modes, including the racing game as your avatar, which is neat, cool, good on them for integrating it nicely like that. You can just join anyone's lobby on whatever weird mode they're playing, and maybe there'll be more kinds of wacky modes in the future, but certainly these are the main, the main shaboodles. Um, oh. You, you would have thought that would have hit me, but no, I'm just that good, apparently. Um, so yeah, so playing the, the rhythm mode, is it hard? It's definitely a little tricky to FC. I definitely have FC'd a couple of songs, but it's a little tricky to get all of them. Um, there was a Kendrick Lamar song, um, and uh, it's got this like wacky bass part going on in it. And I'll definitely say that's one of the trickier ones to, to nail. Um, also on top of that, uh, one general issue I have, so if you're from Harmonics and you're listening, uh, one, hi, I, I really appreciate it. Um, also, I, I do wish Rock Band 2 came out in Australia. I wish I could have loved Harmonics games more than what was available, unfortunately, but that's okay. Uh, and two, uh, one issue I'm having is that when you are sustaining a note, uh, pressing the overdrive button and releasing it will break your sustain, even if you were holding the actual notes. Uh, for more time. It's a very annoying thing, and I do wish that there was a better way for it to... Well, I do wish that pressing the button didn't, you know, affect your sustain. That is a pit. That is a pit and a half. Um, I think we gotta climb on these, uh, leaves. 
It looks like absolute smear at this resolution. Well, not, well sorry, like the texture resolution is just smear in general, but... Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, number two, I also occasionally have a bit of an issue of whenever I'm, you know, we've picked the songs, we're going in. On the first play, sometimes it just takes forever, absolutely forever, for the, um, the song to actually start. We're just chilling there, looking at the stage, chilling for a bit, two minutes pass, and then everyone on the party leaves one after the other. It's not necessarily that it all happens at once, like my connection drops, it's like, nah, we're going one after the other. And then I'm also sort of bound, uh, you know, control-wise to, you know, playing all the songs in the setlist even after everyone's left. A lot of people keep leaving on me as well, just in general. I don't think that's, like, a connection thing. I think just in-game people are leaving. Because, uh, there's no... I mean, there's no penalty for leaving. And there never was a penalty for Fortnite leaving, so... I don't mind that, but it's definitely kind of annoying, because I want to get into a match with people, play some jams with people, and, uh, I'm either let down because they leave me, or I'm let down because they play on easy, and they're still really bad. And, uh, I don't think there's any cure for being bad at a rhythm game other than get good. Uh, this... I remember there's some way to get up here. There's like a brief ledge there. We've got a little ledge up there, but I don't think it's quite there yet. And I know it looks like that maybe you can... Ah! Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. This is leaves for enough time. There we go. Um... Yeah, a lot of people are just not that great at the game. Um, and uh, it certainly is one of the most painful parts, is realizing that uh, if I don't count Guitar Hero Live, it's been at least like 12 or so years since uh, the last like peripheral based rhythm game that really like swept the nation. Um, oh my gosh, hello there. Oh no, he pushed me off. The darn bird, he pushed me off. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of people, I mean, I always joke, a lot of people who play Fortnite are kids, but it's like, oh my gosh, they have never played rhythm games in their life. In the same way as they've also not played racing games, because a lot of people are generally not as good as the racing game. But, I'm a bit more godlike when it comes to the, uh, also that is a lever, ain't it? No, that's just a very conspicuous wall, that's not a lever. <laughs> um... Maybe there's something over there. The ceiling's a bit weird, but you get there. You get there. Um, yeah, the racing game is a little interesting as well, uh, although mm, I don't think it's as interesting as the rhythm mode. Um, pretty much how the, the racing game works is you got a car, car goes forward, uh, you can drift and you'll get uh, speed boots when you drift, as well as also more drifts gain your boost gauge. When your boost gauge fills up, you can press the boost button uh, on Y to boost. And uh, you can, uh, well, you get you get an extra press like a second and a half later to like super boost. So you gotta pay attention, just make sure you hit that super boost. It's not, the timing's not too specific, but eh, you know, it's a little, it's a little more involved. You get pretty free reign on when you get to choose how to boost as well. Um, Uh, I find myself snaking around a lot, which does slow you down in the short term, but maybe sliding around is pretty quick. Uh, speaking of sliding around, we are sliding down here, which conveniently drops us uh, somewhere on the stairs. So we'll, we'll back out of the stairs. Um, I, I do like this level. It's a nice, you know, it's, a, it's another beginning level, so it can't actually be that mean. But I like how it's got all these different areas and it feels a lot easier to digest. Let's put both stones in here. Um, here's the thing though, is that usually a Tomb Raider 3 level would have like two parts or maybe like a epilogue, prologue kind of section to the level, to the main part of the level. There's it's usually broken down into some parts. Uh, but in this game, uh, I don't know, like the, the flares are here and we can slide down and, well, the level's done already. Which, that's a decently length level, but, uh, I'm only gonna do three of them, well. I mean, most of the streams have been three levels, or if there's a fourth one, it's been fairly short, so... Let's read out the description of this next level. Willard must have been holding something pretty special to have all these guards around, thought Lara. 
They must not know about the failure of his experiment, but the telegram said that the fifth artifact was here. It's obviously not in the main part of the castle. Perhaps the lock's natural seclusion hides a deeper, darker secret. A dungeon, perfect for subversive activities and hiding things. The best way to go? Find a locked gate and get on the other side of it. So we slide down- oh, there's a- there's a guy. So, let's uh, let's uh, save right here, just start a new level. We're gonna grab these flares. Uh, that is spikes from the wall. Very nice, very fun. Oh, you can't... Okay. Slide down here, oh. Boulder. Run a bit forward, you're gonna jump. You should land on here before you, you encounter any hardships with that uh, boulder. That's enough time to grab another crowbar. Now, I don't know where the crowbar is used, so if I see something, I'll use it. But, um, there's a possibility that, uh, I just don't find the use of the crowbar. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't quite know where it goes. Uh, let's find a safe place to drop down. Oh, I guess I'm we're gonna have to do it here. Oh, hello there, Mr. Demon Dog. How are you doing? Oh, where are you going? There you go. Uh... One thing I've got with the racing mode, I've had a few, like, weird mm, glitch moments here and there. Sometimes I land on the ground after being in the air, and it just, for some reason, kills me. Sometimes, uh, uh, I, I find it's very annoying that the drift button is the same as the roll button when you're in the air. So sometimes if you go off a ledge and you're in the air, suddenly you start, you know, rolling in one direction as opposed to drifting. And that really throws me off. Um, I've also had some general, like, problems with the lag, where someone will be sort of laggy and they'll push me in weird ways, and then sometimes I beat the stage and then the lag, like, kicks in a quarter second later and suddenly they won and not me. Uh, also, rip. I should have, should have paid attention. That is the, uh, what I like to f refer to as the wonderful boulder room. It's just boulders, they keep going in lots of other, lots of other bits. They should, uh, they don't gate up the way though, so it's not a boulders gate. Alright, lean around right, watch out, oops, oops, that went right on Lara. Very dead. Um, so, yeah, I don't have as much love for the racing mode yet, I don't, I don't quite feel it, and especially given that Rocket League exists as Psyonix's other, you know, big title. I find it's curious that Fortnite is sort of, uh, you know, superseding their own racing title. Oh, and there was one that came back the other way. <sighs> I'll get there. I'll get there, guys. Don't worry. I'll get there. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Now, the Lego mode, I haven't played it. All I know is it's survival base of some kind. Um, but I don't quite know yet. It does have some interesting mechanics that you wouldn't expect from Fortnite, such as uh, map seed, and uh... There you go, so that... Is that rolled all the way out, or...? There you go, oh, okay, here it comes. I wonder if there's any of these items that are actually going to be underneath a boulder when it rolls past. Maybe, maybe. Um, but yeah, no, I haven't played the Minecraft mode. Sorry. <laughs> Well, it is, it is sort of a Minecraft mode. I haven't played the Lego mode. Um, but how curious. I mean, I was, you know, some people will say like, oh, it's going to take like a miracle to get me to play like certain free to play games again or like a new expansion. This is very curious because effectively, uh, well, I mean, it's like the Roblox approach. It's like here is a bunch of, uh, you know, mishmash of game modes and other kinds of fun doodads and, uh, you get to find your own fun out of this. Um, so hopefully people play all these modes enough. The rhythm game mode at the very least... Oh, the rhythm game mode uh, should be at least pretty alright. You only need four people. The racing mode... Often I only see four or six people. I was actually really struggling to get into a game of the, the racing mode um, just before the stream. So uh, for those of you playing at 10 a.m. UTC... Uh, or 9am UTC, I guess you're the real MVPs. Um, oh. This is actually the Baldur's Gate. The Gate of Baldur's. 
There's not even anything at the end of this hallway. Very curious. They probably just want to throw you off as you climb up here. And you can barely see anything, but trust me, there... Was there a door halfway? No, I'm just going mad. Okay, cool. Slide down here. We gotta do a, a quick fast. Get the heck out of Dodge. Got some ammo. Climb up a bit more. Just probably heal right here. Pull the lever. And I'm actually curious. I'm gonna save right here just because this gives me an opportunity to turn left right now. Nah. I was thinking, can you like drop back down after you climb up? And I think the answer is maybe, but I've probably goofed it. So we'll just go safe. We'll go to, through the exit, which uh, I love how it's it's uh, on the other side of this gate. It's actually not quite there. So check this out. You got another health pack. Very nice. I needed that health pack. Um, yeah. How strange. Fortnite has uh, got me mildly back into it. Now, that being said, ground rules. I'm not paying for the battle pass. Uh, that festival pass, mm, I'm really not liking that price. That's a very gnarly price for nowhere near as many cosmetics. This is in the same, uh, oh. This is in the same battle pass where you're spending stars to get, uh, Peter Griffin and do the, the, the bird is the, the word kind of dance. Um, so, uh. You know, <laughs> you know, holy crap, I'm in Fortnite. I don't know how to do the, the Peter Griffin voice, but that's my best. Um, so, uh, yeah, a curious, a curious go at least. Uh, Fortnite, obviously, as well, does stuff with the, the map every season. I don't forget, I forget how long a season lasts, but generally um, a handful of weeks or two handfuls of weeks. Let's have a save here, just just for funsies. I think it'd be fun to save, wouldn't you? Um, I technically didn't get hit by that, but uh, what's the point if I've taken most of my my health? You know, I'm probably gonna cop it from somewhere else. Especially as well, because I know you can trigger all of these without necessarily being like right on it, but they do have weird hit boxes. Um, yeah. Now, I, uh, yeah, uh, so I'm not paying any money, don't worry, I'm not, I'm not gonna casually be like, Hey everyone, buy the Fortnite skin, like, I don't know man, I, I, uh, we'll see where this goes, but I, you know, I play, I played Fortnite, like, five years ago, ages ago, and, uh, yeah, it was fine. Um, I think if you really like you know, long form games that keep updating. Uh, Fortnite always sounds like it's definitely got lots and lots of uh, returning content, not in the sense of, oh, they just keep adding cosmetics, but like, oh my gosh, they actually add mechanics to the map every so often, just randomly. In fact, the whole game is effectively a rotating theater of, uh, you know, game modes and mechanics. You remember, like, the bit that got me, like, intrigued ages ago was when um, they did the Thanos snap, when the, the, the whole, you could get the Infinity Gauntlet as part of Avengers Infinity War and, uh, become Thanos for the rest of the map. Um, and I thought that was fun and interesting as like a, you know, an interesting tie-in to the movie. And, uh, I'm constantly getting crushed by debris. I'll get there, I'll get past this room, that's why I save right there. Um... Ooh, that's a that's a spot. Okay, okay. I think we're good. I think I've triggered everything. <laughs> um. But yeah, like I I I remember I actively did play when they were doing like a superheroes thing immediately uh, before. I think it was generally like a superheroes theme. Uh, so they had a superhero base in the middle of the map, and um, yeah, I, I'm under the impression that even though yeah, Fortnite is only the one map. That map is constantly changing and uh, basically everyone's forced onto it. Interesting model, um, works for some, 
Uh, I wouldn't exactly say it keeps me on forever, but it certainly was an intriguing one compared to other games I've played, like um, perhaps Apex Legends has the same kind of shtick. Um, I guess Counter-Strike is now a free-to-play game. It's, I mean, it's been a free-to-play game for a while, but... Um, move that at lower something somewhere. We'll probably find out where that, you know, is happening in a bit. I keep thinking that this is going to be a dog that, like, comes to life, but it's... It's not. He's just... He's just chilling there. It's just a statue. Getting scared by a statue? Can't believe it, so... Um... Yeah. No, I... Yeah. Curious release. Uh... I think, uh, if anything, it shows how starved I am for a solid rhythm game. It also made me realize that, uh, yeah, Harmonic shut down Fuser. Didn't I mention that last week? I did, I did mention that. I knew that the, the, there was gonna be something rhythm game related. I wasn't actually expecting a proper mode out of it. Um, so, I guess good on them for it happening in this way. But, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Better for harmonics to be making this kind of stuff than for, uh, you know, Vicarious Visions to be dedicated to making, um, Call of Duty DLC, or worse, Modern Warfare 3. But Fortnite doesn't have Nicki Minaj, so they're losing out there. I can't keep up with all these free-to-play games, by the way, in the uh, Game Awards, which uh, this will be a lovely segue. Uh, in the Game Awards stream, they showed off a game called The Finals, uh, which uh, the only thing I really got out of the trailer is when you killed someone and uh, they turned into a pile of coins. Um, there was a sort of Vegas vibe going on, but uh, it takes place in an arena, so I don't know. Hop down. I love this just building here. This, like, room. But I guess this guy is indeed a, uh, a scientist, so, uh, he's gotta have his own research room somewhere. Plenty of guards, though. They haven't gotten the message that he turned into literally, like, the thing. Well, yes, all I'm doing is I'm speeding up evolution. That's my- that's not a Scottish accent, I'm sorry. Um... Well, I will say, uh, so far I haven't felt the controller die on me after me complaining about it a couple of times. So, we're doing better. Um, but yeah, uh, let's talk about the Game Awards. Uh, number one, the actual awards itself, which is, uh, you know, the whole reason why people watch the Game Awards. So let's start off with that. The Game Awards, uh, was okay, but in general, as always, also check this out, this is a little, little statue. This is another key, by the way, and I don't even know if I... the can key. Also, I love how there's a copy of Tomb Raider 2. In that wonderful, like, trapezoidal box. You see, I love how they, they would design these boxes, uh, Eidos, to basically just, like, edge out all the competitor boxes by just being weirdly wide. Uh, Thief had the same thing. Uh, as well, which is why when you look at box you're like, why is it a weird shape? That's just what the box was. It was a weird shape, just cause. Um, I don't think there's a real mystery to how to get out of here, but again, how do you use the can key? I'm not 100% sure. It's just a key for this level, but... Would be interesting to figure this out. Um... Yeah, before I try to just completely backtrack, hold on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. These bookshelves over here. The bookshelves hide the secret, which is you stand here and suddenly uh, a door opens somewhere. We'll keep wandering around. These doors will eventually open the right way. I think this door opened. And then not the one there, but all the way back here. And this one's a weird one because you'll hear it open, but then you'll hear it close like three seconds later. Or it requires me to go through a specific path, and I always kept going to the wrong path. Or you hit a, a bookshelf? Like, hold on, let me, let me try that again. Let's see, okay, it definitely did react when I went to the bookshelf. So maybe it is bookshelf powered. I gotta not stand in the right spaces, so... There it goes again. Okay, so there's a specific path I need to figure out. Hmm. 
to go around this way. I think that's the path they want me to take. There you go. What a what a interesting uh, puzzle they got going on there. I'll tell you that. Uh, I love this uh, radiation tunnel as well. Like I guess this is a secret underground lay uh, underground layer. You know me, I love my underground layers. And in here we should have absolute pitch black. Everyone likes good old pitch black. Um, oh, hey there, Mr. Demon Dog. Take that. Uh, so I believe this should be the safe. Oh, oh, it's not here. It's not here. Um, and yes, that is indeed a little door around the side. Maybe there's something curious up here, or it's just some goodies. It's just some goodies. Everyone likes some goodies, though. Always good fun. That looks like a bigger version of the key I picked up. Hold on, wait a minute. All out here. Very curious. Very curious. Right next to the radioactive pathway, you know? Don't we all? Don't we all? So, um, but yeah, when it comes to the award itself, the Game Awards was okay. Nothing really fancy, a couple of weirdly confusing ones. Uh, I didn't realize that the company that published Cocoon, Annapurna Interactive, is owned by a film studio, Annapurna Pictures, which was co-founded by uh, the literal daughter of Oracle Corporation. Now, I'm not saying your game is not indie, if it, it you know, you can still develop it with a small team, and it's still indie, I guess, but that always gets me wondering, what is the indie category if you can literally be published by a billion dollar company? Uh, maybe they're not in the billions yet. We'll say at least multi-million. They're at least multi-million, right? Now, someone would say even cynically is like, oh, but what about like Devolver, which is a good question. Does Devolver being your publisher mean you are not an indie game anymore. I think some, to some degree, there's a spirit of the indie game itself. Uh, the budget, the work mantra, the uh, ability to create to, to community, and sometimes the scope of your idea, even if it still takes a, a fair bit of budget to, to make. Um, this is a very curious place, and this certainly feels like where I want to use that key, but I'm trying to understand where are the doors? This is a very cool, just like, hill here with some kind of glowy effect in front of it. I'll wander around here for a few minutes, because uh, honestly, we're, this this would be a short stream if uh, I just ran straight to the end every time. Maybe this is where you use the... This one's certainly like the landmark I can interact with, or rather that I can stand next to. Interact in our... Um, Yeah, okay, I'm just messing around, so... Um, obviously, the Game of the Year winner was Baldur's Gate 3, which I hope was not a surprise. One, just remember, the uh, the Game Awards is indeed 90% voted on by critics, so whatever game the critics absolutely fawn over and keep writing about is certainly going to be much more likely to win, which is why uh, games that came out earlier in the year um, not necessarily Zelda, I don't think Zelda was, was one of them, but like, uh, things like, uh, the Dead Space remake, or, um, what was another one earlier? There was one super early, and I was like, oh my gosh, okay. Uh, I guess we can, can we, can we go out here? No, that's not a door, that's just a weird edge to the level. Very odd. Um, I might just peer over here, but... My odds aren't looking good. I don't fully understand this uh, area out here. Not really. Maybe there's something in the center. I'll observe the center a little bit. Otherwise, I'll just bail because I know that the the level doesn't end here. Um. But yeah, ju so just remember that uh, if your favorite game did not win the game awards, it's probably because of that. It's probably because the critics did not like it as much as Baldur's Gate. And that's okay, although I am very curious why, um, I always have this, like, hunch in the back of my head of, like, mm, you know, critics for the longest time were, uh, and, and, you know, 
you know, put, put my money where my mouth is, I'm going to say, well, you know, take my opinion with a grain of salt, unless I come up with some real hard evidence kind of showing that yes, no, it is founded on something. Uh, I have a hunch that a lot of journalists, uh, you know, backtrack on turn-based combat being boring uh, the moment it's done by um, a game where they like the themes and they like the, the atmosphere. Um, like, it seems like if, if, a, if a critic really likes, uh, or at least one of these uh, mainstream critics a lot of the time, um, if they really, really like a, a game um, for a lot of aspects and not just its... Um, not just its, uh, you know, gameplay, but its presentation, they're much more likely to just overlook all the bits that they actually didn't like about it, or that aren't actually as good. Well, this is a fun little vantage point over everything. You can see that there's this little window here, but I think all that does is it looks out towards... Uh... Ah, yeah, I see where they're getting at. So this is, uh... Effectively the bridge from the first level. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because if we look further down here, it's like there's the other... Yeah. I see what you're smelling. I, I'm stepping in what you're smelling in. And we just leave. That's what I mean. It's just... It's shorter than you'd expect. Uh... Where are the secrets? I don't know. I do not know. Um, let's read out another intro, shall we? Um... Lara, for once, was at a loss. Someone else had reached the fifth artifact first. But who? The telegram had warned of someone else. They must have it. Whoever they are, they were good. Willard's guards continue to blindly guard something that wasn't there. And what of this glowing substance, deadly to the touch? A nasty little byproduct of the missing artifact, no doubt. Stumped, Lara returned to her mansion to figure out her next move. A few days later, an unexpected intrusion on morning tea, and her next clue arrives blithely up the garden path, conveyed by a surely tape, uh, paper boy. Oh, I almost, I almost got through all these readings, fine. The repairs to last week's tunnel explosion had begun, her morning paper reporting the destruction caused by some unknown force. She notices that a mysterious glowing substance has been found in the mangled remains of the tunnel, a very familiar glow. Lara grins as she concludes her breakfast. Ugh, cold tea, but a piping hot trail. Dude, she's spinning out one-liners in my my manual notes. Very fun, very nice. Uh, so we now, uh, you know, reappear in Shakespeare Cliff. Still in the UK, uh, although uh, this is, uh, she's wearing her, um, the same outfit that she wore for the Nevada levels. Um, but... Don't be thrown off, it is still, you know, England of some variety. I don't know where Lara would exactly live, but I'd imagine um, she's in a much more remote part of the, of the UK. So, what's a more remote part? Somewhere near like Edinburgh, maybe? Edinburgh seems like a place where there'd be like a bajillion scholars, you know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, that, that was my cynical vibe about, like, uh, about, um, uh, Baldur's Gate being as famous as it is. Does that necessarily mean it's, it's, it's not, it's not a bad game, from what I hear. And I don't, I really don't want to judge a game being good or bad, even, you know, when I haven't played it, so. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna judge that hard. Uh, but I would say that, um... I didn't particularly play any, like, crazy amazing games, even though I did play Tears of the Kingdom. I didn't exactly love Tears of the Kingdom enough to think that it would be too much a Game of the Year contender. Um, so I, was, I, I didn't even root for it. Um, it did win Best Action Adventure Game, though, so neat on that one. Uh, the only other games to win multiple categories, Baldur's Gate 3 won six of them, including Best Multiplayer Game, which really threw me off because I was like, multiplayer? It's got a co-op campaign, but, uh... Really? Multiplayer? Huh. Interesting. Um... It's also got, a What did it have? Best performance? Sure. Um... Best... Uh... I forgot the other categories. Community support. Was it community support? Yeah, yeah, it was one of them. Got the player's choice. Oh, hi there. We're gonna be shooting up a lot of construction guards for some odd reason. Like, we're not just going to Willard's Lair where, yeah, they were researching something secret. Uh, this is literally a construction site kind of down the road from Lara. 
And she's just come in and is like, oh, guy with a wrench. At least this time I can say they're corrupted by an artifact. Oh, wait a minute. That could have said that about the other times. Therefore, it was legally okay for Lara to shoot the feds. Look at them wearing that bright orange. Um. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um. Yeah, point is, Baldur's Gate 316. Um, Alan Wake 2 was another one. This was a more recent release, and I remember reading and talking about it in terms of uh, the mesh shader requirement, but the actual content of the game itself, I don't know. I haven't actually really played or really looked at a bunch. Um, the critics seemed to like it, and I wasn't expecting that, just because Baldur's Gate 3 had... I feel like a more ubiquitous community reaction than Alan Wake. Um, so I'm very curious about Alan Wake winning three awards. The only other game to win multiple awards was Forza Motorsport 2023. It, they didn't put a number on it, so I did. Um, it got both the Accessibility Award, which I feel like is a weird category because it's just like, you know, what even determines what wins and loses that category? I really don't know. Um, I think this is a good, uh, well, no, we, it's not, it's not a very good view into the, the rest of the level, but we'll get there. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a curious, um, one, the other one, one was the driving category, which, uh, as someone who hasn't played any of the games in that category, I would have gone with, uh, Hot Wheels. Just because I, enjoy, I started enjoying the first one after I started playing it a bit. Is the second one as good? Maybe. Um, yeah, you can climb up here, but uh, this is a... Not a red herring, this is a... Oh, you only knew from like one point in the main game. Remember, there's a couple of vents you can shoot. And there's going to be a handful in this level that you can break. Including this one as well. Hops you down to the other side here, only for some grenades. It's so cool. It's for a secret. Well, not really a secret, but it's for grenades. And that makes everything worthwhile. Uh, I think there's vents in the other place. Go and check that out. Um, but yeah, what other ones? Uh, Mario won best uh, family game, I think. Uh, Pikmin won best strategy game. So good on Nintendo. You won strategy game as a genre. Very neat. Um, there were some other ones as well. Uh, I think uh, best action game went to. Oops. Oops. Uh, best action game went to Armored Core. Um, yeah, I forgot the rest. <laughs> uh, that's my problem. I was just like, ah, you know, ultimately, these are, most of these are just games I've never played. So. I don't have a strong attachment. Um, but. Really nothing surprised me that hard, uh, which is a good and maybe a bad thing, but I'd say mostly good. I don't find it too controversial. Uh, if I was a PlayStation 5 owner and the only game I played was Spider-Man, I might be a little more upset that Spider-Man did not win any, but did get nominated for a bunch of categories. I think it's just a natural consequence of there are fewer games these days and um, this one's a weird one as well. You have to spot that there's a ladder on that side. Yeah, I know, right? It's just like, oh, okay, ladder. Um, I think it's a natural consequence of game developers releasing fewer and fewer games each year, which um, is an observation I had. How many trailers were showing uh, games that were going to come out in 2025? Um, I know GDA 6 was probably one of the earlier ones uh, that advertised a 2025 release date, but um, uh, let's see if I can land up here. Um, but just remember, 2025 means bit close. It's a little bit close. Oh! Oh, never mind. Never mind. Well. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really prep that at all. Uh, did I? I'm looking at a wall. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, where did I say it? Um. I think you do need to jump over there, though. Like, it's a little weird looking, but I think that's actually where you need to go. Oops, but... You saw I bounce off the wall. There we go. Greetings, Blob. How's everything going? Ugh. Dang it, Lara. Dang it, you're so crispy. 
very very crispy um, there we go hop down a bit and we'll climb back over again this time with a bit more oomph a bit more feeling that's a weird flame right there Oh yeah, yeah. I gotta, I gotta stop closer to the the ledge because when I'm higher up, I'll bounce off, or I jump back. Maybe jumping back is where you have to go, but we'll see how jumping back works right now. Uh, not really jumping back. I think you do have to just be left and low. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, if I was a Spider-Man fan, maybe I'd be upset, but I don't know, to me, because I haven't played either of the Spider-Man games, or all three, because Miles Morales is its own kind of experience. Um, there's probably more to to take in, and especially, I don't know, I haven't played the game, I can't judge, so. Um, now, the actual presentation itself was okay. They had some guests, they had a lot of people who were in movies. <laughs> The guy who played the Falcon in the Marvel TV shows and stuff, he was tweaking hard. I don't know what he was on. He seems like a chill guy, and I really like his, uh, rats. There's rats here. I really like his rats. Um. That was a stupid question. Back to the rats. Um. But, uh. But, yeah. Um. So throw that switch and the fan slows down. I think we need to keep ro wandering over here though because I think there's two things we need to do and they're both in this direction. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of movie people. There was, a, I think they had Matthew McConaughey near the beginning and he just did not look like he played video games. Um, maybe he does, but it really just seemed very strange because I, I don't know, why not just talk about how cool like, get a game designer. Like, just any game designer. Doesn't even have to be one who's, like, nominated for an award or really, like, tons famous. But just say, like, hey, yeah, I'm a guy who worked on, um, you know, like, the the animal AI in, uh, Pokemon, uh, like, Legends Arceus or something. Yeah, this ledge looks familiar, doesn't it? Uh, there should be... Oh, 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 oh. This is literally a switch there. I, I just keep walking past it. That opens the door that's just to my left. So. There we go. Slide down. Hop down. And we're now in uh, this lower part. We shall continue onwards for a little bit. Um... Yeah, like, I don't know, I feel like they need to get more, like, game developers. Not even, like, CEOs, actual, just, developers. There's a bunch of them that are cool and would really love to just, like, talk about, like, just how awesome an element in games are. Like, as well, especially as well. I love how they're, like, now, audio design is one of the most important parts of a game. Everything, from the sounds of your footsteps to the ambience in a cave. All of this builds environment and gets you into richer storytelling. Every single year, I want, like, I, I, I would love to just go back and go through every single one of these Game Award, like, speeches for whoever the heck introduces audio design. I want to make sure that they either mention footsteps or cave ambience. Because it's always one of the two. There's more to audio design. There's just literal things like, you know, audio balance. Um... You know, like, uh, the ability to have, uh, dialogue stacking on top of other dialogue, the audio directing for, like, speech or other kinds of things. Um, there's so much more to audio design than, than just, e even if you're gonna go really into it, like, even things like, um, the, uh, do people do, like, um, was it, spectography? Where you look at, like, what waves are clashing with other waves, try and make sure you're not just causing resonances in the game. I've not personally done this kind of work, so if I'm just talking out my my butt, you know, please let me know. But in general, I don't know. I would love to just hear from actual game designers, which, uh, as a mild tangent, yesterday, December 10th, uh, or maybe earlier, 
if you are from any other time in in the future. Uh, hello, VOD people. How are you doing? Um, uh, but uh, was uh, the 30th anniversary of Doom, the the famous DOS game, the very very famous one. If you've never played Doom, please play it. Just just please play it. It's it's so good. It's such a great game. And uh, John Romero and John Carmack did an in, uh, an interview stream, and uh, it's very interesting to hear, you know, a retrospective from their perspective. Oh, you see you see what I did there. Um, but also like. There's a lot of things they remember vividly, there's a lot of things they, you know, wish they could have done better, but that's also, like, there's, especially for, for Doom at least, there are no regrets on how it turned out. Doom is, you know, so close to being a perfect product, and in fact, in, in, the, in the realm of video games, there's, it's very difficult to have a perfect product. Uh, I keep hearing doors open. Um, oh, this is one thing I love as well. Everyone's favorite part of uh, Tomb Raider 3, which is the... The oncoming monorail section. Oh, actually, there's two rails. It's not a monorail. It's just a train. But uh, yeah, we got we got a we got a we got a train. Why not? Hold on. So I heard a door open standing right there. Is that directly above me? No, because I was thinking like, oh, if I stand there, then I can like climb up here. But I don't see any particular like. Ooh. Okay, I don't know. No, no, I'm onto something. I'm cooking. I'm cooking. I'm cooking, so... Um, yeah, no, it's a good interview. Go go and watch it if you actually haven't. Um, and uh, give Sigil 2 a try, because John Romero released uh, a six episode to Doom. Um, just on today. Very, very nice of him. Also, the CAC Awards is out. Oh, we got a shotgun. Very cool. This is not a secret, by the way. It is just a, a, a goody cache. Um... Uh... Yeah, I'll give that a go at some point. I really, I really do like my, uh, my John Romero. Um, you know, after Daikatana, you know, I'll do everything, anything for him. <laughs> uh... What is this called? The Euro Tunnel as well? Isn't that where the... Yeah, the Euro... The Euro Channel. Ooh. Um, isn't that where the... Which one's the, the one, the Eurostar? Did the Eurostar exist in 1998? Oh, oh. <sighs> points for trying, points for trying, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'll take another crack at it. There we go. A little smoother. That train just goes down at, like, very particular points, and I don't think there's any secret behind the train, so... Did you want another jump scare room? Because we got another jump scare room, just, just for funsies. Um, it's weird as well, like, nothing particularly hops out at you, but it is a couple of dudes. And guys with, the uh, MP5s, I guess. Um, I'm sitting pretty on my medipacks, though. We're not, we're not burning through too many of them. Also remember, this is the third level, and we are still yet to encounter anything that can poison you. So, that's how you can tell this is a very different game. Um, but, yeah, back to the, the Game Awards. Um, yeah, they had Muppet Gonzo uh, talk about how uh, Zelda was his favorite game, and uh, totally wasn't a scripted sequence, but then again, it's like, you know, you're with a Muppet, when are you going to ask him, how's the weather? It's fine. I don't, I don't mind scripted sequences. Scripted uh, bits for the Game Awards. Uh, we got Quad Bike! Woo! Uh, the second half of this level sort of revolves around using this Quad Bike to make fun jumps. Like this one. And this one. And then, uh, not that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I, how they had... I did not say for a bit, so whoops. Sorry, my bad. How to drag out the stream time. There we go, that's how we do it. Uh, they had the guy who does the voice of Kratos. Come on, do it, did the first section, and they immediately started playing the music as if uh, he had to get off, uh, just because famously his speech last year went on for eight minutes, uh, making it perhaps the longest speech ever done at an awards ceremony. Um, like ever. Man, that's some dedication right there. Um, 
but uh, I I liked I, I don't know that, that was good padding exactly, um, but I I liked uh, I liked his little speech. But yeah, I don't know. Some people I just I just want like a game designer just come up on stage and say introduce a category. Um, other than that, nothing weird happened. Um, one thing I would like to note is uh, uh, if the astute of you would have noticed there was a fence at the front of the audience before the stage and a bunch of security guards basically making sure that only a handful of people were being let on stage at a time. Like, there were no groups at all. Like, maybe I think at the at the, the Game of the Year nominate or award and that was it. Um, no groups at all. Um, pretty much. So, uh... I think they've learned their lesson from last year, that don't let the guy who's orthodox priest rabbi Bill Clinton come on stage. Um, what's his name? Matej? Oop, I ran over a guy with a quad bike. That's okay. Uh, we're in the last area of this map, so I'm gonna kind of draw it out a little bit, because, uh, I don't know, people aren't used to short streams, or maybe they are. We got a couple of levers all over the shop. This one opens everyone's favorite the toilet. Is there a little goodie in there? I think there might actually be a goodie in there. Or I'm gonna hit my head on the, the, the steel beams. Oh well the 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 thing that I've done is that I'm doing two streams for this expansion, but the levels themselves sometimes are a little shorter, so uh if I really practice and I really trained, this actually might have been the same length as the Tomb Raider 2 stream, but I don't know. I'm, I'm taking my time. I'm going to make it like two streams just because then I can show off some things and just chat about some stuff. As well as also not be very tired by the end of everything. Also because I don't have a one offer that I have queued up for next week if I had to do that. Um, what I do have is uh, I did uh, actually record the entirety of the Shadow Man uh, bonus video. Um, there's a lot of things I need to edit out. Um, because I tried to find all the cadeaus, and that took like four hours, and no one wants to watch that. I recorded that over two sittings, so that was fun. Um, but yeah, I'll edit it down, and I will release it, uh, I guess on Christmas Day? Which, oh, actually no, it'll be Boxing Day, because I always do the VODs on Tuesdays. Um, so I guess if you want some viewing pleasure during your holiday season, uh, there'll be a VOD then, but it was not streamed, so don't feel like you uh, have missed it. Also, it's a bonus stream. Like, I'm really just showing off one extra thing. It's not even a stream. It's a bonus video, so. That'll be fun. Um, but yeah. Uh, so then last one was the game reveals of the Game Awards, um, which I don't have a ton to say because... Oh my gosh. Guys everywhere. I don't have a ton to say because um, uh, you know... Uh, this, the Game Awards have weirdly become the new E3. Um, it's a it's a good prime place for really anyone to reveal any game trailer, um, because a lot of people are watching and it's a attended venue event. Um, but weirdly, well, because it's a trailer and not really, I don't know. Actually, it's very it's very strange because it's like it's clearly you're showing off a new product intending to sell it at some point, but. Oh, I remember how we continue. It's a weird one, how we continue. Um, but, no one can come on stage and talk about it afterwards. You literally show the trailer and hope people enjoyed it enough. Um, sometimes you get the, the guy, like Wolf from Payday 2, uh, to announce a game called Gang of Wolves involving a bunch of masked people. Yeah, this is what I mean by this is a little awkward. You gotta sort of get onto the front of this train, but there's like a little lip there. There might be a more proper way of getting up here. Um, this is the way that I just know, and it sometimes works. This will be really how I spend the rest of the stream, just trying to get onto this train. It really looks jank, but trust me, your, your center mass is a lot, you know, more predictable than you'd expect. Hop over to the other side, which is conveniently on a ledge there. Uh, just right over this lip. Uh, set yourself on fire because you decided that was a good idea. Uh, Lara then burns to death while on a quad bike. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll try the jump again. We'll try the jump again. Um. 
But yeah, I can't really recall too many trailers that I thought were very interesting. Um, I did like the, the No Man's Sky guy. Um, had a trailer announcing his new game and, and he had the, the, the gold disc kind of soy jack face um, in the trailer, which I thought was fun. Um, uh, I also liked how he came on stage and, uh, like, he seems like a real guy. He's, I, I would totally imagine all the, the No Man's Sky hate while mildly deserved, oh, oh, I dodged it this time. While mildly deserved, there is a degree of mm, inferred promise and uh, overcommitment. Um, no Man's Sky today is a game that I think a lot of people can appreciate because it has met a lot of desires that people wanted. Uh, also, we got another jump. That's right, the quad bike continues to go on. This area I remembered in my head existing. I thought it was in regular Tomb Raider 3, and then... Uh, it's less complex than I thought. It's actually much less complex than I thought so. I saw comments about the, but why did they not even mention the bad start? And I just say, history is written by the winners. That is true, that is true. Um, they can totally, like, you know, get people to forget that No Man's Sky came out in a poor state, but I think... I think in their, in their regard, the poor start and the good reception it has now is, like, a badge of honor. There's a certain degree of, your game can be good, give it enough love. Yeah, yeah. Um, it arguably has more love than, uh, Lead Dangerous right now as well. Um, but I think that's like, you know, it's a great badge of honor. So, they have a new game. It's, uh, to be very reductive, the trailer looks like Minecraft. I can't think of a single mechanic in that game that is not in Minecraft. Maybe there will be one later. Maybe there's something in the... Oh, oh. Imagine scamming people so you get the budget, then finally deliver the game that you wanted, but then they will not go to the scam for funds. Um, cough, cough, Borderlands 2. <laughs> they scammed different people, though, for Borderlands 2. They scammed Sega. Uh, oh. Hi. Get out of there, stop shooting at me. Um, but yeah. Uh, the only thing, or the only other thing I guess to, to meme on is the name of the game. It is titled Light No Fire. Are we we continuing on the no naming convention, is that it? Uh, my mate, I love you man, he came up with the best thing, he said Light No Fire, more like Might Not Acquire. Ooh. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, good meme, no, I, 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 I hope they do alright. I, I, I hope it does alright. Um, I can't really think of that many other trailers that they really showed off at the Game Awards. Uh, Sega had an interesting one, Smite with Aya. Smite with Aya is okay, but... I, I do like Might Not Acquire. That, that one's a fun one. Because it's, it's like No Guy Buy. It's like that. Uh, we are... Actually, I think done with the quad bike, which is all good. The new whack-a-mole god game. True. Oh my god, rats. Goes to England. Rats. What did they mean by this? So I'll have black and white 2 in this form. I do need to give black and white 2 a good play. I do need to give it. Or just black and white 1. And uh, what's, what's, what's the, the 64DD one? There's one on the 64DD that I also should be playing. There's not many 64DD games, so... You look at a list of them, you'll figure it out by name alone. Uh, I got rid of, a bunch, uh, rid of a bunch of my old games a while ago. That wasn't one among them. Yes, yes. I, I have still kept on to my game library. I have not been very happy in selling a lot of my, like, older games as a kid, so I've just, like, still got them. Even if, uh... You know, perhaps, uh, like, I never... I do try to play my games digitally. I don't really take them out physically much anymore. Uh, I thought that was going to be a gutsy jump, but that was good. Um, yeah, I think I need to drive the bike down here. I think I need to continue driving the bike. Um, we were doing all right. There were some, some, like, wave sounds, some ocean sounds in the first two worlds. This one's just the kind of generic cave sounds again. The mine sounds that we've had for a few games, so... 
uh, get used to. By the way, the, the this this expansion is probably the last you're ever going to see of like industrialized Tomb Raider for a little bit because the next game is very very exclusively tombs. This yeah, I mean Tomb Raider three didn't have a lot of tombs, did it? Really? I think it's just because I don't know. I don't know if people exactly like caves, so they listen to feedback and people are like, oh, I want caves. I think I should have jumped. This is a very curious ledge to be on. There we go. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I can't really think of any other trailers that really happened. Um, I guess one thing, uh, most of the games, except for Palia, were available on PC. Palia is a Switch exclusive, so I guess that one. But pretty much all the rest were on every other con- or were on PC. Uh, some PlayStation exclusive, some Xbox, but they also always had PC. Um, so, PC people stay winning. Uh, that's all good. Um, I noticed as well Horizon Forbidden West is on Steam, like, February next year. Uh, so that's another PS5 exclusive that is gone. It's just, there's no, it's not on PS5 only anymore, so. Uh, what a shame, I guess. Um... So we grabbed uh, ourselves a uh, drill activator card. Now, in theory, you can continue on the level. Nothing stops you from continuing on. But we also uh, have the opportunity to put the card back all the way up to the top, uh, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So we can't drive the quad bike back up, but fortunately, the game has created a wonderful path, allowing you to actually travel back and back down in a rather smooth way. Was it from here, or...? I don't actually think... No, I don't think it actually was from here. Actually, no, it was from here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, how curious. There's this ladder. You probably saw this ladder, like, ages ago. But, uh, this is why this ladder exists. I like this level. I like this, like, pit of, uh, using the quad bike to jump back and forth across bits, and then, uh... You know, you get this key card that is entirely exclusively for a secret. You can climb out, uh, back up, use the key card, and then navigate your way down. The, the, the reason why you can't just climb on this ladder right now is because of that fire barrel. You just can't get down to this, or get over to this ladder in, in a due course, so... Um... Is there something over here? Yes. Rockets for the rocket launcher I totally have, so... Um, yeah, I don't know. Overall, the Game Awards was fine, but... Fine. That's it. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. They keep, they keep loving Hideo Kojima. There's a lot of that. Um... I'm not saying the guy isn't a talented game director, and he's certainly one of the more unique ones, but... Oh, no. Oh, oh. Okay, controller died for a hot moment. Dude, I'm gonna need to test out this cable a bunch, because that is catching me out more often than I'd expect. Um, I love how this is in the toilet, the drill activator. Is that the... No. That wasn't it. Okay, well, I guess the drill activator is, uh, further down. So, let's load and let's see how far... Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, did I navigate all the way back up? So, nice. In that case, we're just gonna continue on, because, uh, you can still climb up from further over here. We got a barrel of fire, a ledge to climb, and this actually looks like the end of our quad bike journey. So long, quad bike. I knew thee well. Um, yeah, yeah, the quad's supposed to go over here. It, it's a bit of a weird jump, but it, it is meant for the quad bike, because it's a weird slope on the other side, so you'd slide down if you climb uh, on foot. It's actually very interesting as well, because it's like, you think that you're getting the quad bike stuck, but really, all progress forward with the quad bike is actually fine, because... Well, we'll see. We'll see in a bit. Um, so here we are, in the train tunnel again. Oh my gosh, we're getting, we're getting, we're getting doubled up on here. There's two against one. Oh, hi there. How you doing? Dude, this guy means serious business, though. If you're gonna swing, it's not double team, but no jump scare. No, no jump scare this time. This is not a jump scare moment. Uh, yeah. 
Um, yeah, I don't have uh, too much else cynically uh, to say about the Game Awards or other kinds of things like that, but um, I don't know. For, for all the negativity that I throw at it, it's like, eh, it's, it's an event, and I can't knock it for being something that exists. Uh, let's pull the switch. I want to work on an industrial site with massive switches like this. Okay, so this thing is on-ish. Uh, there should be, there we go, we drop down through this now newly opened corridor. Where we find a receptacle for a drill activator card. Let's pop her in. Whoa! Well, like classic Tomb Raider, we can't animate it, so... Trust me, it's doing stuff, can't you tell? The, ro the room is shaking so much! It's drilling, dang it! And, uh, yeah, that drill drilled... Uh... That away. <laughs> a little, little couple of boxes over here, though. Let's give them a check a look. Um... Yeah, I'll give some brief overview of the, the things I have been playing other than Fortnite. Uh, I picked up a Nintendo 64 controller and I played through Rayman 2 on the Nintendo 64. It was pretty alright. King, there we go, exactly. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, no, I um, uh, yeah, I played through Rayman 2. I, it's the same game, I played the Nintendo 64 version, I played the PC one on stream uh, a handful of months ago, not too long ago. Um, it's the same game, so there's nothing that I haven't already shown off other than I did not realize that there is an infinite ammo power-up in the final boss fight. Did you know that that was there? I didn't even know. If you want to know how to get it, um, just, uh, pick up the regular power-up, the regular, sh like, shoot ammo, and then, uh, fly back to the main room, hold down jump and shoot. On the Nintendo 64, this is A and B, but depending on the controls, it might be different. Um, and then fly into the ceiling in the main chamber, like right in the middle. You will then just warp into a room, a corridor, fly through the corridor, there will be a blue version of the power-up, and you'll have infinite ammo. I didn't even know that was there. Uh, so, yeah. So, here we go, we got a wonderful jump right here. Yeah, this is, this made me realize that, like, this part of the, well, this expansion, I love how it says pump axis right there, oh my gosh, where does the pump axis key card get used? Um, but this is one thing that's kind of, like, strange about this expansion, there's a lot of bonus areas that the game just is like, I don't care, if you go down this hallway, they didn't care, that's the end of the level, which would mean the end of the stream, but... We're gonna, we're gonna load. We're gonna get that secret, because I actually know how to get it. <laughs> and how do you get it? Well, they close the room behind you. You're meant to grab here, and, uh, let's drop down a little bit, because even though the green is radioactive, there's a little bit of not green. When well, they dropped harpoon ammo. <laughs> Who had a harpoon down here? Do I have the harpoon gun? No. I assume we're gonna be using the swimming thing in the next level as well, but I have not looked far ahead enough, so I don't actually know. Um, let's climb back up. What a thrill! Um, but yeah, no, I, I played Rayman 2, uh, I also played through, uh, Gran Turismo Prologue. Sorry, no, Gran Turismo Concept, the Tokyo Geneva one. Um, all the Gran Turismo concept games are very, very short versions of Gran Turismo 3. A couple of license tests that are all just lap trials, uh, do some races, and yeah, you had a day, basically. You're done. Um, this one's fun because it's got, a uh, um, the pod race. The little, little, there's little, like, ding-ding cars. I don't know how to describe them, but they're, they're, I, they're just little pod racing. It's a little fun... Fun little, little mode, uh, very uncharacteristic for Gran Turismo. Um, or maybe characteristic, because I know they did the mission in Gran Turismo 6 where you drive on the moon. Um, so there we go, okay, all that climbing back up to the top. Now actually, uh, we are not there yet. No, 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 we are not there yet. Next one, there we go. Uh, 
Here we go. Um, but yeah, no, it's definitely a good play. The retro achievement set was fairly straightforward, but it did require certain cars for certain events, and then try to do some clean laps with certain cars. Um, nothing too hard, but you did need to have a handful of goes. Uh, maybe, a, maybe a dozen or two dozen goes at the tracks to really nail that clean lap that's good good enough for time-wise. And also a good tuning set, uh, layout, because you're probably gonna you know, need to know that you can just make the car faster. <laughs> Just change the gear ratio and it's like, boom, super fast. They got the ride height too high. You could, you could just make the car like super grippy and super snappy just by two easy tricks. If you're if you're not hitting your top speed, lower the gear ratio. What's the point of keeping it that, that high, you know? So, good fun, would recommend. Um, yeah, all right, finally, I can actually use the pump access disc. So with this and the other thing drained, uh, or the other thing on, this actually drains the lake, clearing it out of the radioactive muck and allowing you to do everyone's favorite move to get back to the bottom. That's right, the famous old swan dive. Did I say it drained the water? It uh, poured water in here. This opens up a very, very fun little secret. Oh my gosh, the harpoon gun. There we go. But keep going. Because past all the weird looking rocks, we have suddenly arrived in Paleolithic era. I assume that's not a skybox. I assume that's just a painted ceiling, but it does the job. Um, I love this just bizarre venue here, right here. Like, I don't know, I think they were like, well, we've only got six levels, and we sort of want to hit some weird, like, ideas and things all over the place, so they've thrown them in as, like, little bonuses, little secrets all over the place. Uh, yeah, the skybox, in a way, is a painted ceiling. It's just, like, you signal to the game, hey, skybox, and then it will render it, um, like, not by painting a texture on that triangle, but instead painting a texture, um, well based on some other position, so whether it's just camera coordinates rather than, um, you know, where the actual vertex is, which is usually how they go. They just do it based on the view. Oh, oh, here he comes. I love that there's just pterodactyls. Everyone likes a good old pterodactyl though. Only if it's code in the engine. Yeah, yeah, only if it's code in the engine, because, uh, shout out to Tomb Raider 1 Unfinished Business, where the skybox is literally a texture on the ceiling. Um, okay, you can clearly see that the edge there is something I can grab onto, but I know that if you try to grab too low, you don't get it. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Doom from 1993 that did skyboxes. That came up in the interview. John Romero was like, I well, one, E1M1 was one of the last levels made, and E1M2 was one of the first levels made, and it was just like... Uh, what we wanted to do was like put in every single feature that we knew of of the engine So we wanted some weirdly shaped rooms and lots of stairs and uh, having an imp that was so far away That he'd have to hit you with these like long fireballs and it was like have a uh, have the um I mean that's a fun sound, but I'm just curious what that just Mm, I think they want me to go in that little hidey hole that, that you can see there. Um, but yeah, there's lots of like fun things. And, and yeah, one of them was like, I want the skybox to be visible, like right there. Pretty much every room in the level has that sky visible there. And you can see a guy from so far away um, just throwing fireballs at you. So I like his thinking. I really like his thinking. Uh, we got a we gotta guess. We got a guess. There you go. Uh, is the meteorite coming? Ooh. Nicely done, there we go. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I saw it. I forgot how many, like, tiles across. Oh, no! No, I want that health. Dang it, I'm gonna get it because the stream would be shorter without me getting it. I even shot him as well. That's a shame. <laughs> I can't believe that pterodactyl, man, I tell ya. Okay, let's let's just save and, and and run around and get it this time. 
Um. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Old game design is actually good fun. Actually, there was one quote from the, the interview as well that I thought was very interesting. Was uh, There was a lot of like people who learned how to do like um, networking setups for Doom because it used... Um, like it used IPX, but it was like that was something relatively new. A lot of people doing LAN stuff that, that would effectively be kind of serialized. Everyone would just constantly sync data with each other constantly. And hopefully it doesn't go out of sync. Whereas Doom was very much, um, you know, client server. Um, and uh, it was a lot more ironed out, a lot easier to um, to do for Quake. So, but a lot... Oh, I didn't, I didn't nail the jump right, dang it. Um, so the interesting, like, comment um, John Carmack made was, uh, Doom made a lot of people learn how to become, like, IT specialists, and Quake made a lot of people learn how to become uh, software programmers, because they'd be learning Quake C, and they'd be learning how to do real, real fancy mods. And I thought that was a fun, like, you know, juxtaposition of the two games. Um, and there's a lot of, like, interesting stuff with Quake as well, but I, I do like how, I mean, especially between the two of them, it's like, you know, Wolfenstein, Doom, Quake, those are the, the massive ones, although they did, they were both on Catacombs, weren't they? Also, they mentioned Rise of the Triad quite a number of times, so, <laughs> thank you, Rise of the Triad, you have uh, a very important legacy. Okay, we're hidden jump, we're hidden jump, oh, you get, like, barely any time to get that jump off. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna just step forward and jump left. There we go. Now I can finally grab this health that I really wanted from ages ago. I like the secret though. It's good fun. And now back to the goo. We've literally got, uh, like, we get to just swim out of the level. <laughs> the exit is flooded. So we just get to swim out. So there we go. And that's it for the first three levels of this expansion. Um, I'm going to call it there because even though it's a little bit of a shorter s stream. Also, hi Lara, wearing your London outfit. I guess we are in London, so. <coughs> oh my gosh. But with that, yes. Uh, I'll call it there just because if the next three levels take this long, I will be here until midnight. And I don't want to be there. So, Sleeping with the Fishies will be the next level, uh, which I shall continue on with the next stream. Uh, but until then, I'd like to thank you all so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed the stream, it's not midnight here. It's not yet. It's actually, it's 10, 12 right here. But it's more that like if I did another hour 42, we'd be very, very close. So yeah, 11 hours 48. Ooh, ages away. Save to continue. That is true. Wait, doesn't that mean that it's true? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if you enjoyed the stream, uh, yeah, have a good night. You too. Well, it's not night for you, but <laughs> you'll get there. Um, if you enjoyed the stream, uh, ha then yeah, you can follow, uh, or if you miss bits of it, the VOD will be up very soon, probably sooner because it's a shorter stream. Uh, remember to use an ad blocker because YouTube forces ads on videos, also YouTube is killing my impressions. Like I was thinking, hmm, my recent videos don't have as many views, and apparently the click-through rate is still the same, so the number of people who see the video and then click on it is the same, but I have like... 20% of the impressions, so suddenly I get like 20% of the views, it's like, eh, so, um, I do it for fun though, so don't feel, oh, gosh, don't feel like you gotta share it around or all this crazy jam, you don't have to do all that stuff, but just, yeah, if you enjoy it, feel free, there's more stuff available, and, uh, yeah, keep tight, by the way, that Shadow Man bonus video will be out, um, Christmas time, so, stay tuned, see you every, see you there, something like that, bye, woo!